and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Governor Mapp nominates more names for public service. WAPA Board approves the authority audit financial results and inter-island drag racing. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. Channel 8 is brought to you by Body Beast. Call in the Virgin Islands 1 800 458 6815 for Body Beast. This program is the real deal. If you knew me a while ago and you see me today, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? I'm doing Body Beast. I decided to try Body Beast because I was looking for something different. I kind of wanted to lose weight at the same time gain muscle. It's easy. In our top story, in a special board meeting on Wednesday, February 4th, the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authorities Governing Board approved the authority's 2014 audit financial results. According to BDO's financial highlights for 2014, WAPA's water system's net position increased by $3.7 million, or 8%, as a result of fiscal year 2014 operations. The operating and production expense decreased from $36 million to $29.9 million, a 17% decrease compared to the prior year. This was due to a decrease of $6.5 million in production cost of water distributed, a decrease of $684,000 of depreciation expense, increases of $244,000 in operation and maintenance expenses and $177,000 in customer expenses, offset by an increase of $625,000 in administrative and general expenses. In other news, Governor Kenneth Mapp on Tuesday sent the names of two more people he has nominated to serve on his cabinet to the legislature for approval, according to the government house. Nellan Browie is the governor's nominee to serve as director of Office of Management and Budget. Delroy Richards, Sr., is the governor's nominee to serve as commissioner of Virgin Islands Police Department. They join a dozen more candidates who MAP had already submitted to Senate President Navelle James for approval. The governor, however, has yet to announce a replacement for former Attorney General designee Soraya Diaz Kofeld who resigned her position after two weeks on the job, contending it would have been impossible for her to perform her job duties because of what she said were broken promises made by MAP, who, through his chief of staff, Randy Knight, blocked her from making the necessary decisions concerning the operations of the Department of Justice she headed. While MAP searches for a new attorney general, attorney Terry Griffiths will continue to hold the acting AG position. Meanwhile, the Virgin Islands government has settled a case it brought against triangle construction and maintenance allegating violations of the Virgin Islands Plant Closing Act, according to a news release. In part, the Virgin Islands government and Triangle have been able to settle some former Triangle employees' eligibility for severance, the release stated. The settlement does, however, require arbitration to resolve the dispute as to other former Triangle employees' entitlement to servants' pay under the Plant Closing Act. As a result, the Department of Labor has already begun notifying the affected former Triangle employees and receiving back claim forms. The February 12th deadline is fast approaching and there are still some former Triangle employees who need to visit the Department of Labor office on St. Croix to file a claim. Stay with us. We have more news straight ahead. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And welcome back to News Channel 8. Yesterday, the Governor Wang F. Louis Hospital and Medical Center Human Services Holiday Planning Committee presented a check that was raised by the hospital staff for Wang F. Louis' pediatric ward. The governing board 
continues to work with the St. Croix government to ensure that the remaining governing board spots are filled. It is also working to ensure that all of its members are appropriately trained and fully up to date on all healthcare regulatory and compliance requirements that apply to the hospital. The hospital is also collaborating with its partners in the U.S. Virgin Islands. In particular, the hospital is working with the new administration of Governor Kenneth Mapp and the 31st legislature, as well as the delegate to Congress, um, Mrs. Stacy Plaskett, to ensure that they are all fully informed of the hospital's ongoing progress. We thank them all for their commitment to assisting GFL through the SIA. As you can see, the hospital is working extremely hard to make all necessary improvements to ensure its continued participation in the Medicare program and to ensure that it delivers the highest quality care to the people of St. Croix. I'd like to call up uh, the Human Services Holiday Planning Committee. And while they're making their way up, and they, they completely surprised me because they came up and gave a donation that these fine, I don't need, I, you know, I'm so, I, I get choked up thinking about this. What they did was they got together and they were having a party, human services, and they decided, well, what are we going to do for the hospital? What they did is they, they went ahead and did this out of their pockets. This is not from the Department of Human Services. This is from the Employees Holiday Planning Committee, and we couldn't be prouder of them. So thank you all. Everybody got pictures? <laughs> take, take more, please. <laughs> And, uh, and they specified that it would go to the pediatrics ward. So they decided that they wanted their daughter to be born here. They wanted their daughter to be a Virgin Island and a Crucian. And so, and, and her name is Reagan, and she's absolutely adorable. And the initial check was for 25, and there's another 25, and I just think that they're beautiful people, and I think they deserve the biggest round of applause ever. <laughs> I'd like to call up someone who is the epitome of dedication and putting their money where their mouth is. Not only is this gentleman here day in, day out, night in, night out, when he should be tending to his own business. But Phil Arcidi and the Arcidi family are not only just mentors to many of us who are new in, in healthcare, but one of the straightest shooters I've ever had the, the blessed opportunity to meet. We had a need, and Phil and his family wrote a check. Come on up, Phil. Come on, don't be, don't be shy now. <laughs> Wrote a check for $50,000. <laughs> yeah, you might have to hold it a little higher. And, and like I said, when we titled up the amount of time that he takes from his business, day in, day, in, day out, I could tell you, I, you know, he wants to know something, he's on the horn because he's dedicated, his entire family is dedicated. And the strange thing is that I met his father years ago. Year, I'm talking about before my son was born. So it's over 20 years ago, if I got that right. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, and now I know three generations of them. They are great people, and this is the kind of dedication that is going to ensure that the Wang F. Louis Hospital is going to be here for generations to come. Meanwhile, the University of the Virgin Islands will host its first annual Hackfest at the Administration and Conference Center on the St. Thomas campus, February 6th to February 7th. According to Dr. Timothy Fowley, the Karel Sokolov Distinguished Professor of Entrepreneurship at UVI, participating students will work around the clock to diverse innovative solutions such as web page development, mobile apps, and software development for a myriad of problems affecting local residents. Hackathons first started in Silicon Valley and were brought to the mainstream by major technology companies like Google and Facebook. 
The event brings together computer programmers and others involved in software development, including graphic designers, interface designers, and project managers to collaborate on software project ideas. Tech companies such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google hold hackathons monthly, working around the clock to generate new ideas, Dr. Fowley said. UVI students will gather teams on Friday, February 6th, to brainstorm ideas and work to execute their ideas. On Saturday, February 7th, a panel of judges will issue awards to the winning team. Entries will be judged on usefulness, creativity, imagination, and execution. The grand prize is $500 and will be awarded to the team that comes up with the most innovative technological idea. Stay tuned, we have more news. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And finally tonight, here is Stephen Ku Francis with your sports for 1 1 update. Thanks a lot, Junior Stephen Ku Francis here with your sports for 1 update. I'm joined by Victor Peterson, uh, the president of the St. Croix Drag Racing Car Association. Yeah. And next weekend, you guys are having a big event. Tell the folks the dates and tell me um, who you have here with, with you today. Uh, today we got um, Rafael Fontel, the vice president, myself, Victor mm -hmm. Peterson, mm -hmm. the president. Also, I got Malcolm, one of the board members and one of the fans mm -hmm. that support drag racing from since he was in Pampas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Ag Fair weekend, big, big shootout, big match race competition at the Motorsports Complex. Trust me, don't, don't miss it. Mm -hmm. The 14th and the 15th. That weekend, I've been honest with you, my car going to be my Valentine's and I come to ruin other people Valentine's okay. that weekend. Trust me, I done on the line, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> I done on the line. Waiting for anything that want test, it gonna be off. Car race, horse race, anything you want, bring it. We so, there. Sounds good, sounds good. Um, uh, well, what time do the gates open? What time gates open? Gates open at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. on Saturday. 3 p.m. on Sunday. Be there, be square. Okay, um, Vice President, um, anything to add? Um, to urge the folks to come on out, man. Definitely. You got the um, entire island racing as usual. St. Thomas and St. John coming over. Very heavy with 25 cars. You have a lot of Hondas, BMWs, Bugs, match races, grudge, major, grudge, grudge matches. Mm -hmm. You have many names to mention, but come on out and you'll see them and be very entertaining. Yes, sir. Sounds good, sounds good. You know, the folks have been waiting for um, drag racing to come back and St. Croix. Definitely glad you guys have started up and bringing it back to the islands, man. Yeah, cool. Hey, I want to thank Channel 8 definitely for giving us the opportunity mm -hmm. to present ourselves out there, man. This group has taken on the responsibility to, 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 to bring drag racing back to this community, to, to put St. Croix back on the map. If you want to say help mm -hmm. Mr. Map, Lieutenant, the Governor Map, mm -hmm. put us back on the map. We're doing it with drag racing. Ag Fair weekend, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Hey, this is where it's at. We could we could boost this economy using drag racing as as the, the, the you know the ladder if you want to call it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, definitely, we definitely want to make sure the folks come out. It's next weekend. You know, two days of drag racing. Um, you behind there? You have anything? <laughs> what about you? You guys, what we we gotta say? Well, my guys don't sum it up, it up already, okay. so that should be good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, definitely, Victor, I want to thank you and your crew. And we we'll definitely be checking with you, with you next week to um, showcase some of the cars and talk more about this event next week. Yeah. And keep the folks up to date and let them know what's going on with drag racing. Yeah, thank the public, thank the supporters, thanks, thanks to National Guard. Mm -hmm. National Guard has been backing us, Mr. O'Reilly. You know, Attorney Nelson, we got a lot. We got a whole community backing this group, man. The new, the new... Caribbean Drag Racing Association group. My name Victor Peterson, the president, the vice president Raphael. We got board put together, ready to take this thing off the charts, off the charts. Bring it out, bring the car them out, man. Run it. Sounds good, sounds good. For folks, don't forget to check it out next weekend. That's a look at your sports for one update. I'm Stephen Ku Francis for News Channel 8. Back to you, Junior. Don't touch the remote. We have your weather coming up next. 
your weather. Coming up next. Your weather. And here's a look at your five day weather forecast. Tonight, isolated showers. Partly cloudy with a low around 73. East wind around 18 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. On Thursday, isolated showers. Sunny with a high near 86. East wind around 17 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. On Thursday night, isolated showers. Mostly clear with the low around 73. East wind around 16 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And on Friday night, isolated showers. Sunny with a high near 86. East southeast wind 8 to 13 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. This is Cheryl Francis with your Channel 8 News Weather. Well, that's a look at what's happening here in our territory. On behalf of WSVI News Channel 8 TV, we'd like to say thank you for tuning in. I'm Junior Garcia, and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. News Channel 8 is brought to you by Body Beast. Call in the Virgin Islands, 1-800-458-6815 for Body Beast. This program is the real deal. If you knew me a while ago and you see me today, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? I'm doing Body Beast. I decided to try Body Beast because I was looking for something different. I wanted to lose weight at the same time gain muscle. It's easy.